Okay, good morning. Uh, we're going to uh, read some poems by uh, several poets, uh, half, a, half a dozen poets. Uh, one, one poet is uh, Emily Dickinson, American poet, a Supreme poet, and another is also American poet, Walt Whitman. And we're going to have a look how she looks. And uh, uh, we're going to the uh, Wikipedia and, and, and entry, okay? Emily Dickinson, right? There is a great uh, novelist, American novelist. Uh, his name is Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens. D I C K E N, Charles Dickens. Actually, he is the greatest novelist, 19th century novelist. And she is the greatest poet in America, right? And uh, even though she is great, even though we think she is great, the greatest poet in American literature, she had she had uh, she hardly published any poem in her life. People did not understand her. Only a few poems were published in a lifetime. So uh, uh, Dickinson was an American poet born in Amherst, Massachusetts, to be successful. Uh, uh, to a successful family with uh, strong community ties. She lived a mostly in introverted, uh, reclusive life. She uh, remained single. She didn't get married. Okay. Uh, Dickinson family, on the left. Uh, there is a poem by Dickinson. The Shaded Box. Uh, this is the poem. Uh, the lines are very short, right? How many words? Uh, five. Five or six words, lines are very short, right? And also, you see punctuation. What's this? <coughs> Dash, right? <coughs> they shot me in prose. Dash. As when a little girl, they put me in the closet because they liked me still, still could themselves have pipped and seen my brain go round. They might as wise have, have lost a bird for treasure in the pound. Emily Dickinson. Very short, right? Uh, uh, she uses a lot of dashes, a lot of dashes. And uh, it means a lot of things. Uh, can you understand? Oops. Oh. OK. They shot me up in prose. The prose, what, what does it mean? What does prose mean? Prose, prose essay, essay, right? Also, prose means uh, something boring, right? right. Uh, prose, and uh, prose, and the pound. Both words begins with uh, uh, pronunciation P, P, prose. Pound, and uh, they are capitalized. The big letter P, right? And uh, pound, pound. What does what does it mean? Pound. Animal shelter, right? You keep uh, animals in it. Shelter, prison, right? Pound, pound. And uh, closet. Okay. They shot me up in prose. They shot me in. in Closet in the closet, right? Um, uh, what does it mean? I get bored, right? As when a little girl, when I was a little girl, they put me in the closet. If you did something trivial, terrible things, you, they put you in the closet for punishment, as a punishment, right? They punish you, right? They they put me in the closet because they like me still. 
be quiet, right? They, me, they like me still, right? Because they like me still. Still, still, they could, they, they could themselves have pipped and seen my brain go round. They keep, they, they, they try to keep me, keep me still, but my brain's working, right? So, uh, could, uh, they still could themselves have pipped and see my brain go round, my brain go round, right? You can't keep my brain still, right? They might as well, as wise, right, as well. They might have lodged the bird for, for treasure. Or uh, they, in, in the pond, they uh, might have lodged, they might have put a bird in the pond, in the cage, right? What does it mean? You can't, you can't put a, put a bird in a cage, right? Like me, I'm a bird, right? Do you like it? Very short point. Right. And okay. Emily Dickinson and the friend Kate. Uh, another point. A solemn thing it was I said. A woman, white to be. Um, a woman, uh, white to be and wear. <clears throat> uh, they say uh, Dickinson uh, wore, had, had worn white uh, throughout life. Tombstone, right? Uh, this is the first book by Emily Dickinson, Poems. Cover of the first edition of Poems, published in 1890. Uh, handwritten manuscript. Uh, the extensive use, use of dashes and unconventional ca capitalization, right? Capitalization, big letters and uh, dashes in Dickens' manuscripts and the idiosyncratic, idiosyncratic vocabulary and imagery combined to create a body work that is far more various in, in its styles and form uh, than is commonly supposed. Dickens and the boys, pentamet, uh, pentameter, opting more generally for trimeter, tetrameter, and less often, diameter. Sometimes her use of these meters is regular, uh, but oftentimes it is irregular. The regular form uh, she most often employs is the Bella stanza, a traditional form that is divided into four quatrains using tetrameter for the first and third lines. And Uh, trimeter for the second fourth while rhyming the second and fourth lines, A, B, C, B. Though Dickinson often uses perfect rhymes for a line, two or four, she also makes frequent use of slant rhyme. Some of the poems, she, uh, in some of the poems, she varies the meter for the traditional Bella standards by using trimeter for lines one, uh, two and four while only using tetrameter for line three. Since uh, many of poems are written in traditional ballad standards with ABCB rhyme, rhyme schemes, uh, some of these poems can be sung to fit the mel melodious of popular folk songs and hymns that also use the common meter employing the alternate lines of iambic tetrameter and iambic tr trimeter. Familiar examples of so such songs are O Little Town of Bethlehem and Amazing Grace, right? So, uh, her, her poems have a very tight uh, form, right? And compared, in contrast uh, with this uh, poet, Emily Dickinson, 
there is a uh, poet, Walt Whitman. And uh, he uses, OK. Walt Whitman. He's a very different poet from uh, Dickinson. Uh, as station journalist, humanist, uh, he was a part of transition between transcendentalism and realism, incorporating both views in his work. Whitman is among the most influential poets in the American canon, often called the father of free verse. Free verse, free verse, right? His work was very controversial in his time, particularly his poetry collection, Leaves of Grass, which was described as obscene, obscene for its overt sexuality. Uh, <coughs> he was a journalist. <clears throat> Uh, Whitman at the age of 28. Whitman, Leaves of Grass, uh, age 37, frontispiece of Leaves of Grass, and Whitman, here. Yeah. Handwritten manuscript. Portrait of Whitman by, okay, old man. Whitman, stamp, famous American series, American, American series, postal issue, stamp, postal issue. Uh, we'll have a, uh, an example of his point, okay. As I said, what, 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 uh, what makes a poem poetic? What makes the poem? Lines, right? Long lines, short lines, and things like that, right? And uh, uh, in the line, uh, there is a line called uh, end stop line. End stop line. What does it mean? At the, at the end of a line, there is period, comma, semicolon, things like that. Uh, even when there is a uh, no such punctuation. Uh, there's pause here, so we call it, if, if, if the line changes, if the line changes, then what? It's like uh, comma, comma, a comma, right? So, and stop lines. And the, the good example is uh, Yeats' poem, Yeats. Yeats' form is very strict, right? And very musical, huh? and uh, run and rise. Uh, we call it in junk ma, ang junk ma, ang junk ma, right? Uh, the lines are continuous, right? Rise uh, go on and on and on, like as in Walt Whitman's poetry, right? It's, it's, it's called ang junk ma, and uh, we'll see uh, a sample poem by Whitman, and uh, uh, probably one of the greatest poems by Whitman is a Song of Myself, Song of Myself, and uh, we, we'll, we'll have a look at the first stanza, and uh, uh, the beginning, uh, the first uh, three or four lines are regular, but uh, later on, uh, uh, there are many uh, running on lines in a point. And also in a, in a uh, line, you said tetrameter, pentameter, and things like that, that's measure, stress, right? Uh, uh, th strong and weak accents, a combination of uh, stresses, different stresses. It's musical, right? So uh, if you understand the principle of lines, it means that uh, you have understood everything. 
you need to know about writing poetry, right? So uh, now uh, then let us have a look at the poems. I'm going to give you some handouts and then go through the poems together. Okay. Okay. Actually. Uh, One of the po two poems is by Emily Dickinson, and uh, actually, uh, there are no title, titles uh, in the Emily, Emily Dickinson poems, right? She wrote so many poems, and uh, no titles. Just so they, they number the poems. So each poem has a number. And we are going to read uh, poem number 465. 465. And the first line goes like this. I heard the fly buzz when I died. I heard the fly buzz when I died. Uh, you, do you remember one famous poem by Yeats, Long Necked Fry? Huh? No? You don't remember it? Uh, when you hear a buzz, a fly, a buzz, is it quiet or not? If, if it's noisy, you can't hear a fly flying, right? But uh, I heard the fly buzz when I, when I died. The stillness in the room. The stillness in the room. Uh, look at the word, stillness. S is capitalized, big letter, right? This is unique. In German, in the German language, you can use a, a, a big letter in a noun, right? But in English, I don't know. Uh, she is the only person who uh, did it. And I heard the fly. Look at the word fly, capital F. I heard a fly buzz when I died. The stillness in the room, in the room, capitalized. R capitalized, S capitalized. The stillness in the room was like the stillness in the air. OK, uh, also, we see three dashes, four da dashes in stanza one, right? I heard the fly buzz, dash, when I died, dash, the stillness in the room was like the stillness in the air, dash, between the heaves of storm, dash. Wonderful. Can you guess? Right. Before the storm, there's silence, right? After the, after the storm, there is silence. Great. Right. I heard the fly buzz when I died. The stillness in the room was like the stillness in the air between the heaves of storm. Stand up to the eyes around. The eyes around the eyes around. Very effective, right? Capitalized eye. It is it's synecdochic. Synecdochic part represents the whole. Your eyes represent you, right? Crown represents king, synecdochic. And then the noun is capitalized, has, has a uh, E capitalized. The eyes, fantastic, right? The eyes representing the, uh, the families yeah? uh, sitting beside the, beside the dying person, right? So the eyes around, the eyes around, dash had run damn dry. They cried so much, so no more tears, right? The eyes had them around, had wrong them dry. And breath, again, capitalized B, breath were gathering firm, breath were gathering firm for the last onset. Whose breath are they? Breath, the dying person? Are the people gathered around, around there? Around, around the dying person? Who? Maybe both, right? Breath, right? Breath were gathering firm. 
for that last onset. Onset? What does it mean? Death. The last breath. Right? Death. Onset. For the last onset. Dash. When the king be witnessed, meaning <coughs> death, the king, death, be witnessed in the room, I will my keepsake. I will my keepsake signed away. What portion of me be assignable? And then it was there, imposed a fly. With blue, with blue, uh, bl blue, maybe, maybe uh, the air, the light uh, in the air, blue, blue, certain stumbling bars between the light and me. And then the window fell. And then I could not see to see. This is the supreme point. The, it's, a, it's a depiction of a moment of, 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 of death taking place. Can you, can you write this kind of poem? You can, right? So this is uh, one kind of poem. And uh, there was another by Walt Whitman. Uh, so on myself. This is a very long poem. Uh, usually, uh, uh, usually uh, Walt Whitman's poems, short poems, uh, short poems. His, uh, sh short poems have usually uh, more than ten stanzas and things like that, long, right? Generally. So, uh, so on myself. Uh, this is the first stanza, the first line in the first stanza. I celebrate myself and sing myself, and what I, what I assume you shall assume from every atom belonging to me <coughs> as good belongs to you. What do you think? The first idea that comes out of it, from it, what, what is it? How democratic, right? Uh, and uh, 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 he advocates, uh, he supports the democracy, right? Walt Whitman, right? I celebrate myself and sing myself. Sing myself? Sing somebody else? Sing the world? He's singing about himself. Right? And, and what, as, what I assume, you shall assume. You shall as, assume what I assume. assume. Right? What I think, what I pretend. You think what I think. Yeah? What I assume, you shall assume. For, because, for, for every atom belonging to me as well belongs to you. So we are the same thing, right? We, we breathe the same air, right? Part of me is part of you. Fantastic, right? Uh, only three lines. Right, in only three lines, he uh, expresses uh, the the uh, the essence of democracy, right? And stanza two, I loaf and invite my soul. I loaf and invite my soul, and I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass. The title of the uh, uh, book was what? Leaves of grass, leaves of grass, leaves of grass. Observing a spear of summer grass. My tongue, every atom of my blood, formed from this soil, this air, born here of parents, born here from parents the same, and their parents the same. I now, 37 years old, in perfect health, begin, hoping to cease, not until death. Wonderful, fantastic, fantastic. So, is it totally different, right? The temperament, the style, is totally different. Falls apart from Emily Dickinson's poetry, right? Creeds and schools in abasement, retiring back a while, sufficed at what they are, but never forgotten. I harbor for good or bad. I commit to speak every hazard, nature without check, without original energy. So, uh, 
uh, let's go back to stanza three. My tongue, every atom of my blood, opposition, right? From formed from this soul, formed from this air, born here of parents, born here of parents the same, and the parents the same. I, now 37 years old, in perfect health, began hoping to cease not till death. Fantastic, right? This is, this is a totally different poem, and uh, this is the beginning of modern uh, contemporary poetry. Okay, and uh, Uh, then uh, there is a uh, another poet, uh, modern poet, and he uh, his uh, po po uh, his language, poet language, uh, totally different. It, it's quite uh, uh, at, at at a glance, it looks like uh, Walt Whitman's, but. It's quite simple, and it's, uh, it's like a uh, sentence, right? Uh, I'm going to introduce another poem, uh, Wallace, Wallace Stevens. Uh, probably uh, he is uh, the greatest modern poet, along with uh, uh, Williams, William Carlos Williams. And you are going, we are going to read William Carlos Williams' uh, uh, poems, a few poems. And uh, actually, uh, the first poem we're going to read is a uh, young housewife. Uh, it, it is a story, right? Uh, the, the poem is a depiction of a uh, young housewife. Or in the morning, she's, uh, she's uh, going to buy something uh, from the, uh, from the uh, merchant. And this depiction of her and uh, the speaker is a man passing by every morning, probably every morning. And it's, it's very beautiful, psychological poem. And uh, uh, if, if you look at a poem, you'll see that uh, it, it's prose actually, right? It is a, uh, uh, a few sentences. Uh, broken, broke, bro, bro, uh, broken down, but uh, it reads uh, very beautifully, very musical. And uh, okay, let's have a look. Okay, the first poem: the young housewife. At ten a.m., the young housewife. What? The poem begins with uh, at 10 a.m. <laughs> okay. At 10 a.m., the young housewife moves about in negligee behind the wooden walls of a husband's house. What is this? Right? The young housewife. Uh, it begins with the uh, definite article, the. What does it mean? The speaker, the, the, the speaker sees her often. Right? He makes it habit to have a look at, at the woman. Right? At 10 a.m., the young housewife moves about, moves about in negligee uh, behind the wooden walls of her husband's house. I pass solitary in my car. I pass alone in my car. What does it mean? Nobody's here. Nobody watches me watching her. Right? I'm alone, right? So, uh, second stanza. Then again, she comes to the curb, the curb of the road, right? She, she comes to the curb from the house. Uh, she uh, gets out and comes to the curb to call the ice, ice man, fish man, to call the ice man, fish man, stands shy, stands shy, uncorsetted, 
no corset on, right? Uncorseted, tucking in stray ends of hair, tucking in, right? Tucking in <coughs> stray ends of hair and comma, and I compare her to fallen leaf. What? He compares her to a fallen leaf. She's beautiful, right? But he compares the young housewife to a fallen leaf. Fallen leaf. The noise, noiseless wheels, the noiseless wheels of my car brush with a crackling sound over dried leaves as I bow and pass smiling. You can, can you read the psychology of the uh, speaker, the man in the car? Now, uh, look at the three stanzas, the three stanzas. All of them are what? Each stanza is one sentence, right? You learn something, right? At 10 a.m., the young housewife moves about in negligee behind the wooden walls of a husband's house. I, I pass solitary in, in my car. Oh, two, two sentences, right? Straightforward. It's not a poem. But the line, line breaking, the line's broken, make it a poem. Now you understand? Great, great, right? Uh, look at this stanza too. Then, then again, she comes to the curve to call the iceman, fishman, and stand shy, uncorseted, tucking in the straight ends of hair, and I compare her to a fallen leaf. Uh, in one uh, sentence, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't make it poetic, right? It makes sense, but uh, here, if you uh, give uh, poses uh, between lines, it com comes out live. It, it, it feels like a great poem, right? Then again, she comes to the curve to call the iceman, the fishman, and stand, shy, uncorseted, tucking in straight ends of hair. And I compare her to fallen leaf. Beautiful, right? And the last stanza. Noiseless wheels of my car rush with a crackling sound of uh, dried leaves as I bow and pass, smiling. So they know each other, right? They exchange greetings, right? And uh, also uh, in, in this stanza, uh, look at stanza uh, line two. Uh, rush uh, with a crackling sound. Rush what? Rush over dead leaves. Uh, there's, a, there's a break between the uh, professional phrase, over dried leaves, right? If you break uh, like this, uh, rush with a crackling sound with dried leaves, as I bow and pass smiling, it's normal. It becomes uh, uh, tedious, right? But here, uh, the poet broke the phrase, over, break, pause, dried leaves, it becomes a poem, poetic, right? Good, right? Uh, uh, over uh, dried leaves as I bow and pass smiling. Fantastic, right? Okay, there is another poem. This is a very good poem. Uh, you remember a part of this poem, uh, Queen Anne's Lace, Carrot, Wild Carrot. You remember? Queen, uh, uh, Queen Anne's Lace. You don't remember? Okay, the third poem. Her body is not so white as anemone petals, so nor so smooth, nor so remote a thing. Her body is not so white as anemone petals, nor so smooth, <coughs> nor so remote a thing. It's kind of erotic, right? Erotic, right? Don't you think so? Very, very sensual, sexual, right? But actually, 
the poem is not about the uh, human body, a female body. It's, it's about what? Wild carrot, right? <laughs> uh, wild carrot's flower, white flowers, right? So her body is not so wide as anemone animals, nor so smooth, nor so remote a thing. It is field of the wild carrot taking the field by force. It is the field, it is a field of wild carrot taking the field by force. So it is a depiction of the wild carrot, the wild carrot. The grass divided by a semicolon, the grass does not raise above it. Have you seen it, wild carrot? Very tall and you can't see the grass and white flowers, right? So the grass does not raise above it. Here is no question of whiteness, white as can be with a purple mole at the center of each flower. With a purple mole at the center of each flower. In each flower, in this set there is a mole, right? Right? Yeah. Each flower, each flower is a hand span of white over whiteness. Wherever her, his hands has lain, there is a tiny purple blemish. Wonderful. Very essential, right? If you touch it, it, it grab it hard. You leave what? Blemish, right? White body, female body, white, right? You grab it, right? And then what? You leave a tiny purple blemish. Each part is a blossom under his touch to which the fibers of a being stem, stem one, stem, uh, stem one by one, each to its end until the whole field is a White desire, empty, a single stem, a cluster, flower by flower, pious wish to whiteness gone over or nothing. Very passionate, right? <laughs> it's great, great point, right? Uh, Queen Anslade is, is a projection of his, uh, his uh, idea or desire for a woman uh, into a... Into a uh, no. Well, carrot, right? Fantastic, good. And uh, there is another poem, portrait of a lady, and uh, we call it. Uh, it's, it's a uh, uh, a poem about artwork. Uh, this is a special genre, right? Portrait, of, portrait of a lady. It's a. Uh, it's about a painting. Uh, your thighs are apple trees. Whose blossoms touch the sky? Which sky? The sky where Watto hung a lady's slipper. Did you see uh, Watto's painting? Uh, a woman on a swing and the slippers in the air, right? Watto, Watto's painting, right? So, uh, the sky where Watto hung a lady's slipper. Beautiful, right? Your knees are southern breeze. Your knees are southern breeze. Or gust of snow. Ah, what sort of man was Fragonard? Another painter, Fragonard. As if that answered anything. Oh, yes. Below the knees, since the tune drops that way, it is one of those white summer days. The tall grass of your ankles the flickers upon the shore. Which shore? The sand clings to my lips. Which shore? Ah. Paddles may be, very essential. Paddles may be. How should I know? Which show? Which show? I said paddles from an apple tree. What do you, uh, do you like this poem? Can you write uh, this kind of poem? Okay. Okay, uh, we'll take 10 minutes break. Okay, thank you.